be here. Uh, every time I find myself among all these smart individuals, I ask, why did I even invite me here? So I still don't know the answer. Although I got an idea on the answer now watching and listening to see Russia. Um, you can hear me? Okay? Yeah? Uh, I don't think we need. As I said,
Someone reminded me of another example the other day, actually two. One was Abraham Lincoln, who was, well, you know, you all know Abraham Lincoln. Did you know that Abraham Lincoln ran for office 12 times for elections and didn't get elected? And the one time he got elected, he set this through. He is today, and he will never be forgotten because of what he did for the Civil War and, 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 and the black and white issue in the United States. You know, for those of you who don't know, don't care much about history or Thomas Edison, there's young men, athletes, you know, there's the case of Michael Jordan, the basketball player, who got kicked out of high school team, basketball team, two years in a row. His coach told him he wasn't good enough. And yet we all know he is Mr. Basketball. The reason I'm telling you this, not to talk about failures, but failure is a necessity in our entrepreneurial spirit, in our entrepreneurial experience. We need to see what it is. I don't wish for you to fail, but be prepared that if it did happen, it's something that we can extract positive things out of. The context of where we are today, as a country, as an educational system, uh, provides us with a lot of things that are not going very well. Many of us go to bed today, say, you know, pessimistic in a way that perhaps I don't see a light at the end of the tunnel. What am I going to graduate to? Companies aren't hiring. It, it can be daunting. It's sometimes difficult to get started. But it is, that's in itself, is an opportunity for many of us to create things, to come up. I personally look at it, someone said to me the other day, you must be crazy. You've left Boston behind you, Harvard University, your son, your life in the States. And what the hell are you doing here? Well, I mean, there are many reasons as to why I'm here, but one of which, this is an opportunity. Yes, I'm involved in social activities and, and, and civic activities and political activities and every activity you can imagine only because uh, there are so many opportunities for us today to set Tunisia on the right course. Now, is an opportunity for you to pick and choose social and economic sustainable entrepreneurial projects. You need it, our country needs it. So think how to get involved, how to take action. Ideas are great, but how do I turn ideas into action, into sustainable projects that employ people? You know, if you don't plan, and someone said, one of those sayings that you'll never forget, if you fail to plan, you're actually planning to fail. But we all have great ideas. Every one of us right now has probably a ton of great ideas. But ideas are as good as the paper they're written on until you actually proceed and go to the next step and then fall and then deal with the first obstacle and then hire your first guy that you, you know, that you need in the second and the third and turn those ideas into socially and economically viable projects. What do we need as young entrepreneurs? What do we need to do that? The first thing that we need to do, and this is more so, more so today in the context of Tunisia than almost any other part of the world. Who are we? Who am I? In what, in, where do I fit? In my family, in my school, in my society. What role do I play? And you hear everyone these days, especially when you turn on the TV at night, talking about al muadna citizenship and all of that stuff. But you, who am I? What role do I need to play and what character and behavior do I need to have so that I can be that model citizen, that model entrepreneur? There are entrepreneurs who fail and never start again. And there are those who fail and, and their knees are scraped and their elbows are scraped. And they get up and they do it again and again and again. So if you have the care and the willingness to do that, then you are the kind of person that's going to make a difference for yourself, for your family, for your immediate circle of influence, and for the society that you live in. So, who am I? What, what character and behavior and, 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 and habits do I need to have? Well, we all have bad habits and we all have some good habits. First of all, 
How about identifying what good habits I have, what good habits I need, and more so, more importantly, what bad habits do I need to get rid of? And for this, we need to be really, really honest with ourselves. Because we are Tunisians and we believe that, hey, I got them. You know, we need to be honest and say, listen, I truly, this is truly not acceptable behavior. I cannot be on my fourth year of university studies and I'm spending three hours on Facebook every night and then complain to my teacher that I have too much work. I teach at a school here in Tunisia and I have MBA students. Students have at least spent six years <coughs> of university. And every time I log on Facebook, they're chatting with someone. Okay? And there's not enough time. They wait until two or three weeks before the final exam or before the paper is due. And then they try it. And these are people, most of whom today are running companies. And when you say, have you identified any bad habits in your behavior? They say, no. Oh. That's not being honest with yourself. So let's identify what things we really need to improve and make the changes necessary. Because until we do so, we will always we'll be spinning our wheels to go nowhere. So who are you is the number of question that you need. And so benchmark yourself. I mean, you all deal with this stuff in school, you know. There's a way of not only doing your own SWOT analysis, there's a good practice for what you've learned in class, but benchmark yourself. Score yourself on everything that you have. Your communication skills. For instance, your listening capability. Because I have not have yet to meet someone who is not a good listener. Since I've been back at the age. We are all great listeners. Yet we have the biggest, our biggest problems are because of our communication abilities. And so, take a score of what your environment needs. Don't have a monopoly on the truth. Be willing to listen to criticism. Be, listen, be, be willing to listen to the other point of view. I have sat on some meetings and some, some associations and political parties. And this is where I'm not optimistic. Because we always tend to push away people who have different views than ours. I was fortunate to have worked in the 2008 presidential campaign in the United States for Barack Obama, and I ran the Northeast region area, the New England states, and at Harvard University one time, where he came in, where he picked a lot of the team, he came and looked at Larry Summers, who was the president of Harvard University, and he said, Larry, that we needed a succession, you know, what do you call it, the transition team, to take over the, the, the Bush to, to the Obama administration, and he said, I need 12 people to work on this passation, okay? And he said, oh, by the way, I don't want anyone that agrees with me on anything. We'll debate amongst ourselves, and then we'll, we'll come up with the best idea. May the best man win. And this guy is getting ready to take over as president of the most powerful country in the world. In other words, admitting to himself that he may not have the best idea. That his thoughts and his ideas and experience may not be the best. And today I run into people. They haven't even began working and they've given you advice on the best way of doing things instead of listening. So the first advice, and those of you who heard me talk a couple of weeks ago, is learn and listen. Learn and listen. And look around you. Look, be aware. Be aware of your environment. Be aware of the society that we live in, what it needs. And then I want to give you an example of what learn, look and learn means. I've been really impressed lately by a book I just finished. The author is called Jeremy Rifkin, and he talks about the Third Industrial Revolution. If you have not read this book, it's available in English and in French. I strongly recommend that you get it, because it affects every single one of you, if you're all a neat students. It's available in French, and it's called the Third Industrial Revolution. I hadn't thought about it for about two months, and then when Zier called me to speak about this, and I thought about it. I said, what an opportunity to talk to the students about this book and, and what it means to you. And just briefly, I will give you a very, very brief recap of what he talks about. There's a third
third industrial revolution underway right now. It's taking place. And we're not even aware of it. We watch it. We see all the elements of it around us, but we don't know how we can jump on board so that we can take advantage of it. And he says, think back to the first industrial revolution. The first industrial revolution coupled the steam. Okay? Being alien of the steam and the vapor. Energy from steam. Through, through steam, the printing industry was able to, in other words, go from five kilometers an hour to all of a sudden 100 kilometers an hour. Because now we're able to print a lot faster, a lot quicker, more quantity stuff. Therefore, the education in that period just improved vastly because we're able to print books a lot faster and to communicate a lot quicker. So what he did was he coupled the birth of a new energy source with a new, with a new way of communicating. And that's the first industrial revolution. The second industrial revolution was like an old choo-choo train, and it was going very slowly until it was, you know it, oil and petrol and all of that, until the birth of the telephone, electricity. Couple of electricity with telephone, radio, television, and boom, you have a second industrial revolution that the world took advantage of. And here we are today, as lots of us have lived in that 20th century second industrial revolution. But the third industrial revolution, and the reason why I'm talking, and I thought this would be an interesting, to you, an interesting thing to talk about, is because it's not too late. You can jump on board, and each of you will be able to do something that will help not only yourselves, but the country that we live in. But let me briefly tell you about it. Fossil fuel is in a limited quantity. And everyone today is talking about the need for renewable energy. Everyone's talking about what happens when oil runs up. Oil by oil, I mean petrol and all of its derivatives. Countries today are focusing on wind power, solar power, biothermal power, and you know, lots of what is called um, you know, the sort of new energy as opposed to what is called the elite energy. The old elite energy was oil-based. The new energy is a sort of a lateral sustainable energy. In other words, it's, you can pass it around without having to rely too much on the old energies. But just think, how can we couple this new energy, new sources of energy we have today, with the internet? Coupling energy and communication is always the way to the future. And there's some ideas that he shares and, he, and actually started being implemented in Germany. Where in terms of storage, sharing this energy. Each of us can generate energy through, as opposed to getting online and exchanging information today on the internet. Imagine if we can get online and exchange energy over the internet lines. Let me explain. We create energy through each of us in our, in our own home depending on where we live, it could be through solar or wind energy or, or, or hydro, uh, water uh, related energy, and we store that energy if we don't need all of it. We can store it through in, in hydrogen, and I mean, this is more your department than mine, okay? And we can sell that energy to each other on a, on a network like we do today, electricity, you know, electricity is network, right? Countries are network, we're a network with Algeria, Libya, and so forth, and cities are network. But internet, by through the internet, we could exchange energy with each other and build each other through a network. And that energy is created through, as I said, all the alternative ways that we have today. Solar and, you know, and other sorts of energy. Now, why is that important? Why am I bringing this up? We depend a lot today on fossil energy, and we, as a matter of fact, import and have to buy. And we will begin very shortly seeing uh, cuts in electricity, in water. In the summer will probably experience that. During the heat of the summer, we may not have enough electricity, we may not have enough water. We import oil. Okay. And in five to ten years, that's going to be 
a lot worse. So if we begin thinking about renewable energy and creating sort of innovation, ways of innovating us and so that we can create new businesses, new small entrepreneurs, uh, uh, entrepreneurial ventures, we could be in a position to export our knowledge to other users as well, such as Europe. Europe is a, an aging community, a lot faster than we are. In 2030, 2035, when you're all hopefully successful businessmen and women, the European community will not have enough manpower and enough experts, expertise to take care of the energy needs that it has. We would be positioning ourselves because of our proximity to Europe, okay, to be the first ones to provide Europe with that sort of need that they have. Knowledge and renewable energy and communication and putting the two of them together will keep us in Asia in the forefront in terms of providing employ employability and providing young men and women with an opportunity to create newer businesses, newer side of companies. Um, that, as I said, will always go back to do I have the personality to be the entrepreneur that turns those ideas into really sustainable, successful ventures and that requires that you become much better people, much better leaders, you know, taking stock of who you are and what you are and doing the necessary things to improve upon that. I don't want to make it any longer than it already is and I hope it helps. Thank you very much. Merci, c'est votre fille. Donc, euh, Tawa, on a un petit débat. Il y a un de questions, il y a un de remarques, euh, une idée à partager avec les autres. Les trois vins. Merci, Tawa. Merci, Tawa. Merci, Tawa. Merci, Tawa.